Hey, Tourpreneurs, it's Mitch Bach. And just a quick note before we begin today's episode, Tourpreneur is currently sponsored by Google. We're thankful for their support of our community, and we are offering with them a completely free course helping you unlock the power and potential of Google's Things to Do program, which is specifically helping tour operators add their tours to Google in new ways that gives you new exposure and more direct bookings. To learn more, go to tourpreneur.com slash Google. And as always, show notes, more resources, links to our newsletter, our business coaching community, and so much more are available on tourpreneur.com. Now to the episode. Welcome to the Tourpreneur Podcast. Travel industry veteran Shane Whaley will take you on a journey with fellow tourpreneurs, sharing their tips, ideas, insights, and success stories to inspire you to make your tour business the best it can be. And now, here is your host, Shane Whaley. Hello and welcome to episode 95 of the Tourpreneur Podcast. We don't usually broadcast on a Monday, but today we bring you an exclusive announcement from two former guests of ours, two food tourpreneurs. They have teamed up with a major booking platform, and they've built a microsite, which they say not only can earn you bookings and business, but will also pay you a dividend. Intrigued? I know I was. So we welcome onto the show today... Lauren McCabe Herpich of Local Food Adventures, Midji Moore of Juno Food Tours, and first time guest on the Torpreneur podcast, Sabine Whitney of Fair Harbor. All the show notes for today can be located at tourpreneur.com forward slash 95. Some exciting news you want to share with us. Uh, so there's three of you here. Who wants to kick off with the announcement? Well, Shane, we are just so excited to share with you and the tourism industry that we are actually creating a new uh, reseller marketplace um, in partnership with Fair Harbor. And we want to introduce everyone to Global Tours Connect. It is our the first industry-focused, industry-forward online marketplace that is created by tour operators for tour operators. So uh, we we're able to share an amazing opportunity with Fair Harbor, and we wanted to create something that's really going to bring the industry together and unite all of us as tour operators in creating a place where consumers can go and really discover amazing tours all around the world. Right. So as I understand it, it's almost like a microsite, an OTA microsite, which right now you're starting off with food tours, correct? That is correct. Yeah. How did this all come about? Um, actually, it all started when we were on your show um, uh, quite a few months ago. And Sabine sent us an email and she said, um, hey, Midgey, I heard you on Tourpreneur. Would really like to talk to you about this idea. And so then I said, oh, that's a super cool idea. We need to have Lauren in on this. And so then it just started with this wonderful conversation between Sabine and um, our tech guy, Raleigh, who's also with Fair Harbor and creating just this um, idea of how we could support our industry within the industry. And it, so it was just, it's actually been a very easy transition for us. Sure. And Sabina, what was the discussions within Fair Harbor to bring this about? Well, we had just heard Lauren and Midgey go on Tourpreneur previously and we're really excited about what kind of space we could tap into further, especially under circumstances of COVID, in line with management philosophy, where when you're hiring employees, you want to look for people who have like the star shine in their eyes, as hokey as it sounds, but you're looking for people who have this drive and this commitment behind the industry that they're operating in. So Lauren and Midgey, I could just hear their passion bleeding through over the phone and thought that there was quite a tremendous opportunity for us to partner together in some capacity and um, wanted to draw from the resources that we have for um, website development and third-party connectivity to just materialize some of the visions that I knew that they could bring to the table. What kind of tour operator is Global Tours Connect aimed at currently? 
Well, our first market, our first round, let's just say, um, in phase one, we're really looking at food stores, um, particularly within the United States, because, you know, with any opportunity, um, you want to, you know, as they say in marketing, you eat the elephant one bite at a time. And so you take baby steps and you start out small. And there, it was just a natural order of things for us to go with food tours because there are people there, you know, we, there are colleagues and we know them all very well. And we also know what it's like to be a food tour operator because we are and what their needs and pains and, and issues and concerns are. And so we started with that. So right now, food and beverage tours, yes. I, I'm looking, I can see our friends at uh, Main Brew Bus are listed as well, which is uh one I'm hoping to enjoy myself this summer, if it's safe to get out and about. Yes. Yeah, we're very excited because um, we are seeing the trend where uh, food tours and drink tours are definitely coming back. And we're really, and, you know, they were doing a lot of the food tours and food tour operators pivoted with boxes and different opportunities. And so I think it's just a, just a natural plate marketplace for us to be in right now. Sure. And what kind of traveler would you say the website is aimed at? Yeah. So Shane, I think one of the biggest things for us and, you know, when Maji and I were, you know, shared this opportunity with Fair Harbor, we talked about this and I can't tell you how many times at the end of my tour or even a couple weeks after a tour, I get contacted by one of my personal tour guests saying, you know, Lauren, I had a really great time. Do you have a recommendation for a tour in another city? Um, or I'm, you know, we're going on vacation next month. Do you know somebody there? And unless I know them personally and can direct them, um, to a tour company, you know, directly, I don't know where to send them. There's really, you know, another place other than, you know, the larger OTAs. And we said, you know what, this is a great opportunity where we can all work together and truly just promote each other. And so on that note too, one of the, you know, aspects of global tours connect is that we're creating a community where we are able to promote each other. And again, as I mentioned at the top, you know, we are a reseller. And so we're sharing the reselling, you know, our reselling earnings that we're getting um, through Global Tours Connect with every tour operator that's going to be promoted and listed on the platform. Sure. So as I understand it, you're going to be paying out a dividend yeah. to yes. each and every tour operator that, that's part. Mm -hmm of Global Tools Connect? Yes. Um, so the way that will work is that um, as tours are sold and we get reports, um, we do a calculation of all the tours sold and then our portion of earnings, we take some of that and we will split it out to all the tour operators that are on the platform. So basically, it's our way of saying thank you for being on, on the um, in the marketplace, but also um, we want to help our industry. I mean, and truthfully, in the COVID age right now, tourism has probably been hit harder than any other industry because it's a leisure purchase and it's a discretionary purchase. And um, people are really hunkering down and they're, they're very finite with their spending dollar right now. And so, um, I mean, as you know, in Alaska, tourism has all but stopped. So um, it's just one of the ways that we can support our tour operators as we try to regrow tourism and help that economy by giving back, by saying the cool part is, is that if a tour sells in Maine, a person in Florida actually benefits from that. If it is your off season in December and it's someone else's high season, you're benefiting from that. So you are, it's passive income for everybody on the platform year round. Yeah, I'm really intrigued by this idea, almost a cooperative approach. And also something I say to, to many of our listeners is the challenge with OTAs, for instance, is they want the big ticket item. You know, they want the, uh, the tour, the boat ride out to Alcatraz because that's the big seller. But if you're a small food tour in San Francisco, are the OTAs really able to sell you? Yeah, so that's actually absolutely kind of the, the plan is that we want to close that gap between the small operators, mid-level operators and large operators. I mean, obviously when we would like to have all of them, but really it's the small voices that aren't being heard and it's um, hard for them. But if we have a collective voice through this marketplace, then it's going to open up opportunities for everybody. What's the commission percentage to, to work with you? 
with the the way that the Fair Harbor Distribution Network works, when people sign up for that, it's a 20% commission, which is an industry standard. And then mm-hmm. um, through that, we get a portion of that. And then we are pushing a lot of that. That's what we're using to push back out to the tour operators through our, our avenue. Industry, I mean, I work with a lot of resellers and a lot of travel agents and 20% is an industry standard. And I mean, when I built my company, I built my tours to absorb that 20%, which is just good business 101 that you can, uh, because you want people to help you sell your product. Yes. Yeah. So this is, this is functioning like an online travel agency. So micro OTA. Um, so by using this marketplace, Midgey and Lauren are collecting their commissions And what's unique about what they're proposing from a pricing perspective is that I don't think anyone within the industry is really putting much investment towards improving the performance of their OTA sales. It's more like, we're going to get signed up. We'll be at this rate. It is what it is. Um, But the more that they can commit and invest their time and energy and resources into making this a viable platform, um, the more returns they're going to see from that. There we go. So it's just the 20% and then it's the 6% on top, which is added onto the price. Yeah. Well, right. Well, it's, it's just, if you, okay, I have to do easy math. So if you had a hundred dollar tour, 20% of that Mm. would be commissioned, which you are willing, you know, you're saying, I want to give that up so that someone else will sell my tour and I can book more people. That's kind of what we do. But when the customer doesn't see that, the customer will see the 6% ticket fee, which is normal. Yes. So there, you know, so that's a normal thing that, you know, it's based on that. 100% 100% mm-hmm. gross sale. As far as the, the the supplier is concerned, the tour operator, they pay the 20% to you on each of their sale, and then it's the 6% processing fee, which the customer pays. Correct. Correct. Got you. Yeah, I'm and clear think, on that now. And the main difference there, Shane, is that you know, for us, in our viewpoint, 20% is the industry standard. Right now, mm-hmm. we're the only ones that are giving money back. So you can pay 20% to a hotel concierge, to another OTA, to another OTA another reseller, no one's giving you anything back other than just a listing on their site. And so what we're doing is we're sharing the wealth. We're creating a dividend program. And it's no different if anybody is um, familiar with REI, um, the outdoor supply company. I mean, they do this. And so, you know, I think a big thing as, you know, Midgey and I have been working on this. And again, we're part of the community. This is our family. And so we have, you know, we've seen you know, the pain points that so many operators have shared. And, you know, in looking at this, we said, okay, what can we do with the opportunity that we have been given? And how can we make this fair for everybody? And it just made sense that we would, we're part of the community, we want everyone to win from this. Yeah. I understand the commission. I understand the dividend. How are you going to get eyeballs onto the site? So travelers are going to book the tours that you're listing? So that's actually one of the things that we're really excited about. Um, Lauren and I both come from very strong marketing and PR backgrounds. So, um, and I'm a firm believer, no one tells your story better than you do. So we're we telling our story. And um, I mean, we have a lot of cool talking points and things, but I think that um, really the other thing, and Lauren, you should speak to this because you really address it well, is having a collective voice. On you know, of the people that uh, the operators who are going to be in the marketplace, and they're going to be sharing everybody else's story. I really love and I appreciate when someone is on my tour and they say, "Lauren, I had a great time. Who else would you recommend?" I mean, that's very empowering for me to say. You know what? You're heading to Florida. Yeah, go on Annalisa's Key West food tour. You know, if you're going up to Maine, go on Pam's Maine food tour. You know, I know these, you know, ladies and these tour operators directly. I want to send them business, you know, directly in their way, you know, but there are places that I don't know, you know, a tour operator. So I want to send them there. And it's great that you can actually be your own concierge. You don't have to rely on a hotel's concierge to do it for you. You can do it yourself. And it's so easy just in a thank you email or after at the end of the tour, you know, we're going to have the opportunity in the near future of operators being able to get, you know, little business cards that they can share. Like, look, if you go on another tour, you know, if you, if you know them directly, send direct business their way. You know, we want, we want tour operators to succeed, but if you don't know someone in the market, send, you know, hand them a little card and say, go to global tourist connect. And guess what? I, you know, I, the tour operator 
you know, I win in this too. I, you know, I get a little commission fee. Um, and so, um, you know, it just, it just really works. So we, we look at, you know, a th- kind of a three prong approach, one word of mouth, and we all come together. And, you know, one of the things that we all say is that if we all work together, we have a bigger voice Two, as Midgey mentioned, we have, you know, really extensive, you know, PR and media relations backgrounds. And I think I, I can speak for Midgey as well as, you know, some of the biggest drivers of my tour sales have come from PR and also too, that absolutely drives SEO because not only are you getting a mention in a magazine, a website, a blog, but those links back to your website really help um, within, you know, online searches and then three um, SEO. So continuing with the SEO effort in, you know, we'll have a blog on the website. So, you know, we're looking at, you know, creating content that is talking about what cool tours are out, out there. What are the best food tours that you see in Chicago? What are, you know, some awesome brewery tours across America, you know, traveling and, and, and this will be part of a future phase, but, you know, traveling overseas, here are some, you know, tours that you want to check out. And so those are things that we're going to be doing that, you know, I think will help put us on the radar for a lot of consumers. Sure. And I, I love that you're going to create content around this because I think this is one of the things that's missing. When you look at an OTA, it's almost like going to Costco, right? Or to our, to our listeners outside of the US, it's it's pilot high and there's everything on the shelves. You're not going there for one specific thing. Whereas going to Global Tours Connect right now, if I'm looking for a food or drinking tour and I can also read reports, a field trip or a review um, or even a curated list of things to do in a particular area. I do like that side. I guess what the, the aspect I'm struggling with a little bit is how you hope to, how would I find your website? If I'm not, are you going to do other than SEO, which as we know, takes quite a while. Are you going to be doing any SEM, PPC? Are mm-hmm. you going to be you know, competing with, with the larger OTAs out there, for instance, in order to attract business through GTC rather than the bigger OTA players out there? Yeah, you know, the big thing, Shane, and I think the advantage that I have personally is I live in the Bay Area and I'm surrounded by Silicon Valley 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So I understand the amount of money it takes to create platforms and then also to market those platforms. And I think in being realistic in the resources that we have, you know, I think we look at it as, you know, it, there is not the amount of money unless we are going out to venture capitalists that would be, would enable us to compete on Facebook ads or Google search again, against the major OTAs. That is not our, that is not what we're looking at because it's not realistic for us. I think we really look at, you know what, hey guys, you are all on Global Tours Connect. Start getting this out to, you know, your, you know, your customer bases. I mean, sure. I have 2000 people on my email list. Another person might have 10,000 people on their email list, you know, and, you know, for someone like Midgey, you know, Midgey's, you know, tourism is down right now in Alaska, but she has people from all over the world that have been on her tours. There's no reason that she can't send her customers an email that says, you know, I loved having you on my tours. If you guys are, you know, back at home, look at a local tour operator near you and go support them. I mean, I'm actually looking at doing that right now um, because I'm not coming back right now in California, probably at least until the fall. And so I want to support uh, my local tour operators. I would say too, um, Shane, you know, being able to create this in the time of COVID, I think we all saw a push at the beginning of, you know, support your small um, restaurants, support your small local businesses. There was, there's nowhere that I can send people to say, listen, you know, if you don't, if you're not from the Bay Area um, and you want to support your local tour company, where do I send them? There's no, there was no site out there that I can say, go to this website, find a tour near you and just buy a gift card from them. There's nothing. Yeah. Guess what? With Global Tours Connect, there is. What's the response been like from tour operators that you've spoken to about Global Tours Connect? They love it. They actually, yeah, we've been, we haven't told um, a whole lot of people because we're still, we were at the time still in development, but the people that we did talk to, to get feedback on, um, they said it was not to overuse the word, but unprecedented. They really appreciated the fact that we were looking at this from their perspective 
And uh, my husband, who is not a food tour operator, he just happens to be married to one. He says when we, he can't wait till he can put his company on it because he has fishing charters. Um, he, nice. You know, it's, it's so they just it's and it's so simple. I mean, it's just a simple process and it's you don't have to fill out a 17 page legal document to be a part of it. And there's, you know, not like all these hoops you have to jump through and everything. And it's just like we want it. I'm a firm believer. Make it easy for me to give you money. The feedback we've been getting is really positive and very encouraging. And you know what, Jane, we'll actually be able to answer that question later today because this for the you know, this is the first time a lot of people are hearing about it as well, because we wanted to share this with you and your audience first. Yes. And so we're really excited to to kind of see what people think about this on the Facebook group um, when you post it. And you know, really just understand like what what do people think? And you know, again, like Midgie said, from the ones that we shared it with, they really love it. And I think they're appreciative that we're willing to share this opportunity with everybody. Yes. Cause we, could have, cause Midgie and I could have easily said, great, we're going to take our you know commission and enjoy everybody, but we didn't want to, because we are so fortunate and we really love the community that we have, you know, been able to be a part of. That's why we're, you know, we're bummed about, you know, arrival and, you know, the large scale events not happening this year to the extent that, that they have in the past, because we, Part, big part of the reason why I love going is seeing my friends, you know, seeing my food tour friends um, and seeing my other tour operators that I've gotten to know. Um, and so we just, we wanted to create something that really is for all of us. And one other thing that I wanted to add just on the current circumstances is that I don't think that consumers recognize the activities corner of the tourism industry to the extent that they should. And especially during this time, everyone's trying to support local and small businesses and flights and hotels dominate this industry so heavily that no one recognizes that they can offer that support in the form of local and small business tour operators in their area. So this is a really powerful way to reach those guys um, during these circumstances. I don't know if it's going to last another week or year, um, but it's something that everyone needs to have on their radar. I mean, you're right about our industry being a family and us all want to support each other. And it's one of the reasons that I'm incredibly humble to work in this industry. And all of us could earn a lot more money if we were to join certain other industries. I mean, Lauren, you come from the media world, I'm sure. They pay a lot more, but we do what we do in tours and activities and experiences because of being part of the family. And when we see smiling faces on our guests after a tour, that's what it, that's what it's all about, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, what I always said was I can be having a really bad day and I do a tour and my day is exponentially better. And that is a feeling that I'm sorry, no paycheck would ever be able to give you. Exactly. What does a tour operator need to do? So they've listened to the show today. They've gone to the web's lovely looking website, by the way. That that was built by Fair Harbor, Sabine? It was, yep. How, what do they need to do to get involved and to sign up and be listed on the site? Yes, go to globaltoursconnect.com and then there is a join us tab. And there it's like a two to three step process. It's super simple. Uh, so that's where the first step is. And then, sure. and then we, we uh, bring you into the family, into the fold, and then we take it from there. Yeah. So pretty much Shane. Yeah. When someone comes to globaltoursconnect.com, they click on join us. Um, and there's, you know, two steps. One is join the Fair Harbor distribution network. And right now, just so everyone's aware, we are onboarding Fair Harbor clients first. Yes. Um, and so you would be, you would join the Fair Harbor distribution network, agree to their terms. And then the second thing is we have a form on that join us page that tells us global tours connect that you as a tour operator are interested. Um, Once we get that information, we'll be able to send you what we're calling our agreeable agreement, Um, a very, we want it to be short and simple as possible. We've worked with our lawyers um, to create a very succinct agreement that just tells operators what we're promising to do. And IE, that's literally, we're just going to pay you. Um, That's pretty (laughs) much what we're promising. And then two, for the operator, just to share with us, you know, we need, you know, their tax form so that we can, you know, do everything properly and everyone's being paid as a, you know, 1099 vendor. Um, And then also um, just, you know, proof of insurance as well. And so we also know too, with that, that, you know, and, and I'm in the same boat that I, you know, put a pause on my insurance during this period uh, that we weren't offering tours. 
So if someone is in that same position, you know, we'll, you know, just once you're back up and running, send that over to us. But if they forget, don't worry, we're going to be checking in with everybody again, because these are our friends and family. So, you know, we'll be checking in just to see how everyone's doing and just say, Hey, are you guys running towards you? Hey, don't forget to send us um, that insurance payment. And then for anybody who's not a Fair Harbor customer, um, Fair Harbor client, you know, we are, you know, ha- we will have a phase two where we'll be, we will be onboarding non-Fair Harbor clients and also um, non-food tour companies and also tour operators outside the United States. You know, we just ask, you know, submit in that um, interest form so that we know that you're interested. We're going to take that data. We're going to take that information and see how phase one happens. And then we'll start onboarding everybody. Because if we start seeing trends like, look, there's a huge group in, you know, Europe that really wants to get on. Or if there is a huge group from another booking platform, um, you know, that allows us to prioritize and be able to say, okay, in this next phase, you know, we're bringing in, you know, X group. So um, we really thought this through Shane. And again, Mm -hmm. because we want this to really be, you know, like we're saying, it's by tour operators for tour operators. One of the criticisms I I hear of the larger OTAs is how long it takes to onboard. What would you say, um, what do you estimate is going to be the onboarding time for someone who from signing up and sending you in all the documentation that they need to going live on the site? Well, essentially, if you're a Fair Harbor client already, you are pretty much being onboarded, you know, as soon as you agree to their agreements and then Mm -hmm. send it to us. I mean, you know, what what you're doing is by agreeing to be part of Global Tours Connect, honestly, you're just agreeing to allow us to pay you. Um, And so and and for right now, you know, because we are in the middle of June. So going forward, we're going to have two payouts a year. Um, and so one would be at the end of June, the other one would be, um, at the end of December. Um, and so, you know, we'll see how, you know, the money comes through. I, 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 to be honest with you, I can only see a minimal amount coming in during those first two weeks because we're just really in the onboarding process right now. So I can see our, almost our first payment happening at the end of the year. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's essentially it. So, um, you know, again, I think we've, you know, in working with Fair Harbor in the past, I think it's, what's what it's been 12 weeks, ladies. Yes. I, yeah. It's been so fast, but we really have been able to kind of think everything through and, you know, figure out how this works. And just, again, Midgey and I have, we, we've had so many texts and emails and FaceTimes. And as we've been going through this, you know, I can't, I can't tell everybody how many times we've said, okay, keep it simple, stupid. Let's keep to the <laughs> Yeah, keep it super simple. Let's not get complicated. I'm listening to you. And for me, if I'm a food tour or a beverage tour and I'm on Fair Harbor right now, it'd be a no brainer because it's it's no cost to me other than if you sell any of my tours and I'm going to get something back. What, What do you think will be the reason why people decide not to work with you? I guess the reason would be is that, you know, there's always that that one little bit of a percent in your head that goes, it sounds too good to be true. It probably is, yeah. you know, and I can respect that. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a, a pragmatic person myself and I would have to say that it really isn't too good to be true. It's just true. Um, it's just, you know, we, because we come from the tour and activities world, we walk in those shoes every day, just like, you know, everybody else, we really do know what that feels like. And so I think that if someone would said no, I think it would just be, it's just, that's just crazy. Give us a try, you know, give us a try, see what happens, be a part of this conversation, be a part of that collective voice and let us help grow your company. It costs you nothing other than being a part of the distribution network, which most Fair Harbor clients already are and help us change the voice of tourism and unite us in one collective voice. Did you know every weekday Shane curates the most interesting news articles in tours and activities and sends them out in a snappy daily digest? Grab your copy of the Tourpreneur Daily Briefing at www.tourpreneur.com. Curious why why people wouldn't want to sign up. So I'm I'm sure we'll get some feedback on that on the group. Yeah, I would expect that we, I would be shocked if we did it, but I I would like to know why they 
what yeah. they're thinking as well. I think that's good information for us to have. Keeping it under the hood of Fair Harbor clients to begin with for phase one is going to give us like an incubator space to work with. So just looking at what's working, what isn't working, how can we get more traction behind this, more organic or ad spend visibility around this. So once we have like that trial environment to draw insights from, then we can expand that to the entire market and we'll know exactly what to target and like what kind of value props make sense for people right now. Um, so hopefully just keeping it within the community is going to help bring light to just what's representative of the broader industry. And then we can be reactive to that down the road. Sabine, when do you envisage there would potentially be a phase two where non-Fair Harbor operators can join up? I would hope to make this a broader initiative by the end of the year, for sure. I think that's Fantastic. totally attainable. And Shana, to that point, I would like to say that for anybody who's listening that is not a Fair Harbor client, to definitely let us know if they are interested, because that information absolutely helps us to see how, how responsive this is. Um, to people because, you know, by getting that information, you know, at least we know, and that's going to help us make decisions faster. Yeah, no, that's a great point because I cannot overemphasize how imperative it is for the industry to come together right now. Um, It always sounds like that's a statement of fluff, but I, we can't get more serious than we already are on maintaining our bottom line and making sure that consumers know where to put their dollars. Mm -hmm. So that rings true right now more than ever. So we want to make sure that this is as widely collaborative as possible, as quickly as possible. That's for darn sure. And I will say, Shane, to that note, I mean, just for full disclosure for everybody listening, both Midgey and I are Fair Harbor clients. I've been with them since 2014. Midgey joined on last fall. But uh, in the utmost, we are independent tour operators. Um, and so, you know, we have a separate company, Global Tours Connect, that is not a subsidiary or anything of Fair Harbor. We are a separate company. Um, and so, you know, we're doing this and that has always been one of the things that we've talked with Sabine and Raleigh and the team at Fair Harbor is that we, we want to make sure that, you know, we have future phases where we come up with solutions and come up with opportunities that allow you know, non-Fair Harbor um, customers on the platform as well. We're going to start with this phase one. And as Sabine um, said, really just kind of work out the kinks, figure out what that looks like, and then we can grow exponentially as makes sen- as it makes sense. Yeah, because look at Shane too. If you think about, so there are tour operators out there that are not traditional food or beverage tour companies, and they provide food Activities. So you can be a mm-hmm. kayaking company and you can be doing a kayaking slash gourmet picnic on the beach activity. You know, we don't want that person to feel like, oh, I'm not a food tour company, therefore I shouldn't be on this platform. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that would be, you know, a, a nice way that we, you know, maybe in an earlier phase that we say, okay, any company that is not traditionally food, you know, we want them to be on next because then it also, from a consumer perspective, it allows that transition to happen a little bit more naturally, where if someone becomes, you know, we, we hope that we get people who are true, huge global tours connect customers where they're like, all right, I'm going to go on global tours connect, you know, when I'm going to book a tour, you know, one time they see it and it's all food tours. And the next time they see it, it's like everything else. At least it gives them a little bit of a transition to that. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the specialization, I'll be honest with you, because it's something I struggle with when I'm when I'm traveling, I want to book a food tour, you know, I, I obviously can go direct, right, because of what I do. But other people are going through the OTAs, not able to find the food tour that they want, for instance, because there's so much inventory on the, like I was saying, it's like the Costco model, right, where they just mm-hmm. chuck everything on the shelves and see what sells for them. So I like the idea of you specializing with food and beverage, I must say. Well, thanks, Shane. That's, that's good input. That's good input, Shane. Well, I think you can, like your, your SEO and your content, you can build it around food and beverage tours and make it a site that people will come to, even if they're not ready to book, they just want to dream a little bit. And who doesn't want to dream right now? Right. About Absolutely. And, and, that's, and, to, and to be honest, Shane, this is not a short term, you know, we're looking at doing this and then walking out, you know, in a year or two. I mean, we really look at this as a long game, you know, with content and creation. I mean, it's, there's a lot of opportunities here. And, you know, the nice thing again is with all of the, you know, functionality, again, everyone gets a piece of the pie. So Sabine, can you tell us a bit more about the Fair Harbor distribution network? 
Yeah. So many people who are using our Fair Harbor are probably familiar with the partner program. And what that had started out with was just like an opt-in program that you could use to resell one another's activities or to have other operators in your area resell your own. So right. um, many folks probably know that Fair Harbor started in Hawaii, where 60 to 90 percent of people are generating their revenue via reseller channels. So the infrastructure around reseller connectivity kind of underlies our system for better or for worse, but it's something that we want to take advantage of, especially when we have the online focus VR division. So something that we have been trying to explore is just expanding off of this core of the partner program where you're just opting in to uh, this marketplace where you can resell one another and see if we can actually help with forward-looking initiatives and explore other areas that you can capture within that reseller space. So we um, essentially just rebranded the partner program into the Fair Harbor Distribution Network. So now we have this core, but we also have like a partnership management team that's focused on developing new partners. So whether that's travel publications, bloggers, Mm -hmm. social media influencers, et cetera, um, we're now charged with being more proactive in looking towards the market and towards industry trends on any areas that that network can capture further. So I think that uh, this whole microsite thing that Midgey and Lauren are bringing forward is a great opportunity for us to just tap into something that's pretty under-realized right now. Sure. And will you be using any of your internal data to share with with GTC in terms of sharing that then with all the, the partners? In order to optimize listings and right, I think it's going to be more focused on what kind of data we can capture just on website performance alone and getting a better understanding of the audience. Um, yeah. So it's not going to be so much about who your operators are, who you're partnering with, what their core offerings are. Um, it's going to be more around the discretion of who is landing on this web page. How did they find your web page? That'll give us more direction on where we should be focusing marketing efforts, because I know that Lauren and Midgey have a really strong publicity core. Um, but where we can help out within that space is on SEO and search engine marketing. So just feeling out any other areas that we can expand on for visibility's sake is going to make a big difference, I hope. But as I understand it, it's going to be SEO. It's going to be word of mouth. You're not going to be committing to, to marketing dollars for this. Fair Harbor will be committing some, yeah, just depending on the successes of it and what's needed from an ad spend perspective. So the quicker we can get traction around this, um, the more likely it is that we can kind of assist in that space. So if you're committing marketing dollars to it, can you really say buy tour operators for tour operators? Because technically it's Fair Harbor putting in the marketing dollars and providing the infrastructure. Yeah, well, it is to get traffic onto this website that otherwise you wouldn't have captured. Um, and it, we we do recognize that there isn't any one resource that travelers can really look towards um, outside of the larger branded names that's more community oriented. But I will say, Shane, I'm sure there's probably people listening right now that are the wheels are in their heads saying, oh my God, are they going to be competing against me on Google ad spend? And that is something that Vijay and I have promised that we will never directly compete on keywords uh, for any direct tour operator. Absolutely not. So like Global Tours Connect branded keyword sets are being captured. So if people are looking for reinforcement on the GTC branding and just getting that name out there, um, Facebook ads, stuff like that, um, those will be driving more direct sales towards GTC's brand itself and making sure that there's some brand recognition within the market. So rather than competing with, you know, best tour in Juneau, Alaska, with which I'm sure Midgey has in the bag, <laughs> um, <laughs> what they'll be looking for is um, like GTC Boston, for example, um, is what we're trying to get to eventually. I wish you all the best with it. I love hearing about collaborative, cooperative efforts in in our space because we need it. We do all need to work together as much as we can. And I'm really intrigued by the idea of paying a dividend, Lauren and Midgey. I'm excited to see how that goes. Thank you. We're pretty excited too. And we hope other tour operators are excited too. So just, you know, this is this is day this is the first day of the launch. We've launched today and 
you know, we, we are excited to see what everyone thinks and, you know, we hope that people join us. I just have one complaint about the website. It's making me hungry and <laughs> thirsty. Look, I'm Yay! seeing buffalo wings. I'm seeing Juno you know, bites and boozes and uh, tequila. And I, I'm starving now. And I'm trying to watch the wait. <laughs> You're due for an in-home experience. Shane. There you go. There you go. Mm-hmm. Marvelous. Thank you all. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Torpreneur podcast. Be sure to visit torpreneur.com to join the conversation and access the show notes, including links to the resources mentioned on today's episode. This is Torpreneur.